I'd like to call to order the Committee of the Whole Council meeting for March 6, 2019. Would you kindly rise for a moment of silence, followed by a Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I'd like to thank all of you for coming out on a night of the 17 degrees. <laughs> Shows real loyalty. And uh, I do want to start this meeting with good news. There, there are a lot of great things going on in town. And on occasion, we get recognized. Uh, so I'd like to share that and ask uh, that uh, anyone here from Beverly's Pastry, please come up and join us. not seen it in uh, our local publications and media, uh, this fine establishment which has been in town for many years. Yes. Let's, let's just say that. Many <laughs> years. Uh, they, they really came through recently and we got a first place prize in cake decorating. Yeah. It is a phenomenal yeah. assortment of jellyfish <laughs> and octopuses yeah. or whatever. Uh, it's it's just wonderful. When I saw that picture in the paper, I thought, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I can't show that to my granddaughters. They'd want some. <laughs> anyhow. Uh, sure. What I have for you is a resolution in honor and recognition of Beverly's Pastry Shop. The Borough of Pottstown joins in celebrating Beverly's Pastry Shop for its awards at the Let Them Eat Cake Baking Competition on February 24, 2019. Whereas Beverly's Pastry Shop has been in operation for over 40 years, located at 322 East High Street in the borough of Pottstown, Pennsylvania. And whereas Beverly's Pastry Shop was reopened in February 2015 as a gourmet bakery under the ownership and leadership of Kristen Serbeck, and whereas Kristen and Associates competed in the Children's Charity of the Delaware Valley in the Let Them Eat Cake competition, and whereas Kristen Serbeck, Katie Tornetta, Helen Ortiz, Olivia Robinson, Mimi Ortiz, and Savona Pizzillo entered an Under the Sea Wedding Cake, and whereas the six-level jellyfish and octopus design cake presented by Beverly's Pastry Shop was awarded the Audience's Choice Award, the Best Design Award, the Best Tasting Award, and the Best of Show Award. Now, therefore, be it, and it is hereby resolved, that the Burgess and Town Council of the Borough of Pottstown publicly acknowledges and graciously congratulates Beverly's Pastry Shop on its awards of the Under the Sea Wedding Cake and encourages residents and neighbors in the Pottstown region to visit and enjoy the many award-winning sweet treats offered in the shop. Enacted and resolved on the sixth day of March, A.D. 2019, the Burgesson Town Council of the Borough of Pottstown signed by Dan Wind and uh, Justin Keller. Congratulations. <laughs> It was a, a really great event. Um, we were asked about two and a half weeks ago, so Katie and I had about eh, two weeks to do this cake. I will tell you, um, Katie Tornetta designed the cake. She 
led this team to build this cake, but this was her baby. I'm, <laughs> I'm so proud of her. That night was, it was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. We were expecting one. The competition was amazing. When they kept on calling her name up, it was overwhelming. It, it verified everything that I did. She's never allowed to leave me. You heard it here. Um, she's amazing and she's super talented and I'm blessed to have you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys so much. Um, that was like a dream come true. I couldn't even believe it. She asked me to do this cake, and I had just given birth to my second son two weeks prior, so it was pretty crazy. I was like, you know what? This is my dream. Let's freaking do it. And I drew this up, and it happened, and I can't even, I'm still in awe. I can't even believe it. Yeah. Come check it out. It's at the shop. We have it up, and we're going to have the um, award-winning cake for the next month at the shop, so check it out. It was amazing. Are you, are you taking orders? Yeah, I'm, oh, wow. we can totally do it. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, we have some committee reports. Uh, infrastructure, Vice President Culp. Okay, uh, we had our meeting on the 21st of February. Uh, Public Works, um, they're still working on the King Street Bridge, trying to figure out what Pico and uh, the gas lines and Verizon are going to do with their cables and that, so that's going to be a while till they get that straightened out. There might not be a, there's a 2020 deadline that might not make that one, I guess. Uh, Pico is going to be changing piping on uh, Kime and Jackson Street areas and also Hanover Street to King from Hanover to York. Parks and Rec is uh, rebidding Memorial Park Phase 3 adjacent to Spray Park. Um, they're going to be scaling it down some. Uh, there's the Spray Park's new playground equipment is coming in in March. And um, Pollock Park is doing their environmental studies and there's also some s private property studies. Uh, Parks Department's taking over the pet fair with foundation and um, the ash borer removal started and the ash, the trees down in uh, Riverfront Park about a month ago and there's possible buyers for some of the good trees so we'll get a little bit of money out of that to help us along for Parks and Rec. Licenses and inspection, all's quiet, rental inspections going well and that's about all I have. Thank you. Ms. Lee Clark, would you tell us about our economic development? How long is the list tonight? Happily. Um, so I'll just highlight a couple of things because they're pertinent to your agenda tonight. Mm -hmm. So you have um, on the agenda consideration of application for a liquor license of 152 East High Street. That does mean that yes, there is indeed a restaurant going into the old brick house space. It is the owner of 152 East High Street. It is Wynn uh, Signature Restaurants. Uh, Pearl Sambasong is the daughter of Wynn and Satita. She is managing the project. I've seen the drawings, they're beautiful. It will be Asian Italian and we're really looking forward to an end of the summer opening. So that's one. Two is there is a beer garden. Uh, there's been a lot of activity. It's hard to keep it a secret when it is an empty lot and they keep opening those doors that people haven't seen open for years. So yes, that is a beer garden. It will be a seasonal garden, uh, but they hope to get at least nine months out of that, weather permitting. So those are good things going on in the downtown. I'd also like to mention and call out Red Horse um, <coughs> Motoring Club. That group is a group of investors that has, they are all in, in town. Uh, they, that is really the project that they came to us with. Uh, they came in the very beginning to town. They are t two gentlemen that are not from Montgomery County even, but they came in and they were looking for a special place to have this vision of a car club. And that was the beginning of it. Um, they bought princes 
um, which is still under construction, but I'm waiting for the day when I can run through my first love of door, because Prince's <laughs> is my first love here in this town. Um, and they really have not only made a commitment of buying buildings, but they are putting viable businesses into them, and they just continue to be supportive of this town, and they want to, although they do not reside here, be citizens and respectful citizens of this town and just make everything better. So I really want to um, just highlight all that they have done here, and um, I hope that you will, uh, without fail, uh, approve that application. And the last thing that I want to do is give our chairman, or president of council, my I pick Potsdam button because I know you gave yours away, mm -hmm. and you're the only other person I see in town that wears it faithfully. So here's your <laughs> I pick Potsdam button. Oh, uh, great. Thank you. Transportation, Vice President Culp. No meeting. Okay. Ad hoc zoning, Councillor Proskell. And uh, ad hoc financial sustainability. Uh, we'll fill in. Um, we're waiting for the next. Yeah, we're, we're waiting for the next uh, presentation from the EIP study uh, before we uh, have our next, our next meeting. Um, we did have last month uh, an overview of the EIP study <coughs> at a public meeting. Um, there was also a public survey, which I think is, has since closed. Uh, we've got, gotten a lot of really good responses in there that will really help to shape the final recommendations um, in, in the plan. So looking forward to that coming in the near future. Good. Under boards and committees, emergency services. Good evening, Council. So I'm Robin Unruh. I am the uh, current president of the Phillies Fire Company. Um, so we had some uh, change of offices there. So as of uh, as of January, I took over as president. So I'm new to this, so please bear with me. <laughs> so we are still gathering numbers for um, February. Um, I realized I was not here last month. So for January, we did respond to 56 calls within the borough. Um, and we had 20 hours, uh, man hours of training. Um, and on February 23rd, we had 10 members of the Phillies uh, Fire Company attend the Hazmat Operations Refresher. That was at the Pottstown Middle School uh, presented by Exelon. And um, we just have a few upcoming events. Um, the biggest one is going to be March 22nd. We are uh, doing a Reading Royals fundraiser. And then on March 23rd, the following night, is going to be our fire, firefighter uh, banquet. That is all I have to present to you tonight. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Kevin? Hello. Kevin from Goodwill. Um, for the month of January, we did uh, 70 emergency responses, and the month of February, we did 92. Uh, just a couple things to, to bring you up to speed. We uh, are continuing with our normal monthly trainings. Two things of a special note. We had a number of our members attend a chief officer seminar at the Montgomery County Fire Academy in January, and we also had a number of our members attend a Drive to Survive class uh, in East Norbert at one of the firehouses down there. Um, normal fundraising events are going on all through January and February, and they're going to continue uh, through the spring. Upcoming events you'll see us uh, posting for and on our website and uh, on our sign out front for our flower sales and breakfasts and things like that, those are all going to be, those are all in our plans to continue. Um, we did attend the Philadelphia Fire Academy uh, in conjunction with 6ABC. Uh, we did the smoke detector program again. Um, the Phillies, uh, Empire, and Goodwill all attended that, and we were able to bring back 108 smoke detectors um, to be able to be given out to Pottstown. And again, um, anybody that needs them can just stop in at Goodwill. And we'll send the crew out if they need help installing them, or we can just uh, give them out if they're able to install them themselves. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, it's, it's a little bit down from the previous year, but we did give out about 200 smoke detectors in 2018. Um, so that's a 
a big improvement for us. Anything that gets out in the community is a step in the right direction. Um, at Goodwill, we just completed the installation of a new roof on our old side of the building, the, uh, the three bay side. Um, we had massive issues with that. Uh, took a new roof. Uh, we were able to get that repaired. And we just completed an LED lighting upgrade to the entire station with the help of a grant from PICO. Mm -hmm. So we just completed that, so we're completely LED inside the firehouse now. Um, and, and that was all cost-saving measure to uh, reduce our electric expenses. Thank you. Thank you. Human Relations, Ms. Levengood. Good evening, councillors. Um, uh, the February Human Relations Commissioner's meeting was canceled due to a clement letter. Uh, March is Irish American Heritage Month to honor the contributions of Irish Americans. March 17, 2019, remembers one of Ireland's patron saints, St. Patrick. Um, it celebrates Irish American culture in the United States. And the next commission's uh, meeting will be held on Wednesday, March the 13th um, at 6 o'clock p.m. in council chambers, and everyone is invited to attend. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Land bank report, Ms. Penrod. <coughs> Thank you for your approval of the policy uh, procedures last month. Um, we now have something to do. Um, we are reviewing our conflict of interest policy right now that's been circulated among our members. Um, and we have a lot of additional forms and procedures and things to consider as, as, we, as, we, as, as we ramp this thing up. Um, at the last meeting, we discussed the different sources of properties for our, uh, for our own education and also something that we'll be able to um, set up uh, for our review process. A couple of us are meeting next week with the community de development manager for the National Community Stabilization Trust. Um, it's a federal program and they administer a land donation program. Um, they have identified a couple of properties that might be potential candidates. This, this is one big giant collaboration, one great big giant partnership, and that is just one more of the tiny pieces that, that may make the, that will help make the land bank work. So we, we have a meeting, a uh, phone call with her next week. Um, Let's see, uh, next, tomorrow night, um, the land bank has been invited back for a second visit with the school board facilities and finance committee. Uh, the chairman wasn't able to attend the meeting in November when Justin and Winnie <coughs> made their presentation and some more questions have come up. So uh, I'm going to be attending tomorrow uh, to answer any questions or try to answer any questions they may have. I don't know if any other land bank members are going to be able to attend or not. Um, and I, I expect that once we actually get up and running, uh, land bank presence at the, these school board meetings will be more frequent because it's going to be such a close collaboration with, with what we're doing. And there was a community leaders breakfast this morning with a, a room full of people who are interested in, in Pottstown welfare and they seem to be very interested in the possibility that the land bank may be, again, just one more tiny little piece to help things work out. Here we when go. is the next meeting? Land bank? Mm -hmm. land, land bank is the fourth Monday at 4.30. Oh, and Ginny, I forgot, I need to have you repost the time. I did. She okay. did. Thanks. <laughs> Library. Library. Next. Um, we oh. filed our annual state report uh, last week, and I will get you uh, a mini version of it, but I'm not sure it's been proofread, so I'll, I'll bring that around. Summer program is being set up for a 10-week uh, session. Our youth director, Lisa, is going to try again to include a, a, a program in the park, uh, actually the, a, a park in each municipality to which each municipality is invited to the other park event. Uh, we were rained out twice last year, so... She's an optimist. She's going to try it again this year. Um, the library is participating in the Eco Fest on April 27th, which is a long walk through Pottstown. 
we're supposed to bring a turtle, not, not a real one, but like a handicrafted turtle. Um, and we're going to name it Bill because the event is in the memory of Bill Sherritt. Uh, charity reception for the chairs, May the 4th. You'll be hearing more from me about this, but put it on your calendars. This is the uh, reception, which will be the final silent bidding and recognition of our artists and sponsors as a fundraiser at the library. May the 4th, 6 o'clock. And tax forms are going like crazy since we're one of the few places around with them. Uh, we, have a, we do have a new board member from West Pottsgrove, Mr. Oscar Boyer. We have not had a West Pottsgrove board member for a while, so it's good to fill in that gap. And then one more thing about the library. Um, uh, we have, in the, as a guest tonight, possibly a, um, a, a future board member at the, at the library, Michael Henzies, who's here as part of his Boy Scout troop badge program, and he was accompanied by his father, Mike Henzies, who's a former board of directors member and former treasurer. Thank you. <coughs> All that Boys and Girls Club. Uh, Kirkland's not here. Yeah, I believe the um, uh, report's in the packet. Okay. Pottstown School District, Councilor Lindsay. So unfortunately, I didn't attend the um, school board <coughs> meeting. I had a convention to go to, but I did attend one of the um, town hall meetings mm -hmm. um, regarding Edgewood um, School. So um, that's still an ongoing uh, discussion. But there is a board member here if he wants <laughs> to say something about the school board meeting because I didn't, I missed it. Okay. That's okay. Uh, okay. You you were at the second of three. I was meetings, at the second. And there is one more meeting. I think that it, yeah, there's one more. When is Mr. Rose? Do you, do you happen to know the the date of the final meeting on yeah, Edgewood? But, uh, it's next week. I believe. I want to say it's Wednesday, but I'll double check. If okay. I follow now. And I would certainly encourage all to go and attend and listen to what's being discussed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very Thank good. You. Brings us to our mayor's report. Uh, no what meeting. Have, nothing. You haven't been up to it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought I could get away with no meeting. No. <laughs> no. Uh, we know you better. <laughs> so I had the privilege of um, getting to spend the last, I guess, the last Saturday or the Saturday before that. I actually got to be in town. Uh, I didn't sleep in. Um, and from 9 o'clock on, we walked around um, Pottstown. We went to the flower shop. Um, we went to the diner for breakfast, which was bustling. So we walked all the way from, which not that far. But there was tons of people out about in town, walking around, walking their dogs, biking. The diner was packed. Um, it was really nice to see. And we went to um, Once Upon a Time that just opened. She has some wonderful items of clothing there so ladies watch out <laughs> some gorgeous shoes in the window I had to uh, stop myself from <laughs> purchasing them we also went to twice as nice and um, I don't know why I've never stopped in before but um, I stopped into the balanced living nutritional food store on North Charlotte Street by Henry's and I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I thought it was a, like a little vitamin store. I went in. They have everything you can think of. Um, all organic, gluten-free. They have eggs, kombucha, Young Living um, essential oils. So everything that I end up having to order online is right downtown in walking distance. Um, and they have wonderful literature. Um, and if you go to their Facebook page, it's Balanced Living Nutritional Foods. They have all sorts of literature on supplements and healthy living. And I also noticed that uh, everyone was actively working early in the morning on Saturday on High Street, renovating buildings for the new businesses that are coming downtown. So um, it was really nice to see. Um, I attended a um, community meeting um, led by a group of concerned citizens who are working um, to better Pottstown. 
Last night we went to the beer and bonsai event at the pub, which was very exciting. I learned very little about bonsai, is more about beer, but now I have a beautiful bonsai um, that I had helped planting, and so hopefully that will survive. Um, I'm going to read up on that. Beautiful jade plant, so that was really cool. Um, went to the public meeting um, here. Um, on the ESI proposals for the uh, budget. And I'd like to thank um, Tracy Purdy, who was a citizen who made a comment um, at that meeting. And she mentioned that she had just moved here six weeks ago. And what drew her to the borough was the bike lanes, the walkability, everything that's going on downtown. Um, and that, that's what attracted her here. And I, I was just pleased to hear that. And it was nice that she came um, to a meeting and um, commented. We had our pension board meeting. Um, I also had a Montgomery County Estate Planning Council meeting, which is good because I ran into one of the heads of Wills for Heroes program, who I have been um, trying to get to come to Pottstown um, to have an event for our fire department and police officers to prepare all their estate planning documents, which we do all around Montgomery County, and they have committed to sometime in the fall. Um, so I'm excited about that. I also um, went to Bow Wow Bliss. I'd like to thank uh, Jen, wonderful groomer at Bow Wow Bliss, who treated Princess Sophia to her um, monthly grooming. And Pottstown Cares concert at the Center for the Arts um, at the Hill School. So it was a busy um, month. Tomorrow at 6 is the trail mural meeting, public meeting at First Presbyterian Church. Saturday at 1 is the Love Rocks painting party at 20th North Franklin Street. There's also something else on Saturday, and I don't know what it is, but apparently I'm reading Dr. Seuss to kids at 10? School board, do we know? What's going on Saturday? No? Saturday. Nothing for, okay. I don't know. Facebook. Some Dr. Seuss thing. I will get more details on that. It better not be, because I have court, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 16th uh, at 7.30 is the Dance Your Ass Off Party Part Du at the Elks Lodge, and I will be going, and hopefully we'll be dressing the part. We shall see. And the 23rd, from 9 to 3, is the clothing and shoe drive to uh, support Green Allies at the Walt House Arboretum, which is located at 1794 Gilbertsville Road. So you can come out and get rid of gently used clothing, shoes, uh, household items that you don't need anymore for spring cleaning. Very good. <laughs> um, Mayor, that's uh, Susan Stream Steam. It's at, um, helps if I put my glasses on. <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm younger than what I am. Uh, 238 East High Street, Pottstown. It's a Children's Discovery Center. Oh, yes. Well, you're welcome. Right. Saturday. Yes, Saturday right. at, from 9 to 12. 9 to 12, good to know. Okay. And the mayor will be taking autographs. Yes, um, <laughs> I will be. I found a book that I recently, um, that I wrote when I was in fourth grade that um, I recently just found. So, you know, I could be a published <laughs> author. Speaking of the <coughs> Discovery Center, um, I'm glad that it's an event for them. I've gone to the, their fundraising event at the Carousel. This is going to be, I love this idea. I don't know if you've heard about it, but... Um, it's a children's museum. So basically we would have something like the Please Touch Museum mini version in Pottstown for the kids. So this is a fundraising event for them. Mm -hmm. Great. And by the way, it's tax season. So I'm going to apologize in advance. Um, March, April, and May are extremely busy months for me. So if it takes me a little longer to get back to you than normal, um, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just working on taxes with new, the new tax law, so I apologize. 
And thank you. Mr. Rose. I was going to answer your question, your other question. The last uh, talk is on Friday, March 15th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Edgewood. Okay. So, sorry. so uh, I would encourage anyone thank who you. can attend, please do so. Thank Got you, it? Hmm. You're welcome. Mr. Keller, your turn. Sure. <laughs> wow, there's certainly a lot of uh, a lot of events and a lot of positive uh, changes happening in in this borough, and it's uh, it's it's great to be a part of that. Um, and uh, you know, one one of those changes that that uh, we're looking at, at least here internally, uh, are are changes to make our processes in the borough more efficient and uh, more user friendly to our our taxpayers, our residents, our investors, our developers. So. Um, as part of the ongoing process to evaluate uh, the services in the borough, I'm happy to announce changes are coming to property transfer requirements. Um, this is just the first of uh, many changes that uh, we'll be uh, working to implement uh, with the uh, LNI department. And basically, this new policy will remove requirements to obtain a property transfer inspection um, if one has already been conducted and has passed within the previous six months. And um, I want to thank Matt Green and other. Uh, local real estate professionals and developers um, for their valuable input uh, that will help make it easier for investors who are renovating and reselling their, their properties in a short period of time. Um, additionally, in, in an effort to provide better clarity on the permitting process for the commercial building renovations in the borough, uh, in cooperation with paid and local investors, uh, we're close to finalizing a commercial building development checklist so this checklist will be provided with the building permit applications uh, to highlight key action items required on both the part of the borough uh, and, and the applicants, along with the timelines generally associated with each review. So um, look for that to, to, to come soon. Uh, also, I just want to hit on another event that uh, wasn't mentioned yet, and that's the uh, Colbrookdale ribbon cutting uh, for the new Colbrookdale station on March 16th at 10.15 a.m. Um, it's going to be in Memorial Park, and this is going to be a free event that is open to the public. Uh, Colbrookdale will also be running a special train departing from Boyertown at uh, 8.30 prior to the event for those interested in riding the, the train down um, to the ribbon cutting ceremony. So um, please come out and join us if, if you can. Um, and, you know, some of you may know Padita has uh, undergone some substantial uh, changes over the past couple months. Um, the latest of these changes that I should make you aware of is the resignation <coughs> of all Padita board members effective on 2 226 19. Um, and a letter uh, addressed to me on that date reads We all happily volunteered for the opportunity to serve our community in these positions, and we are proud of what was accomplished in the past. We believe that there is, there is a better use of our collective time and energy than serving the Padita board. We believe this will provide all of us with more meaningful opportunities to have community impact. So in light of uh, some of the transition that's going on um, with Pedita, I just want to let everyone know that the borough um, is, is working with um, uh, some of the, the vendors and the people associated with the very various events that Pedita was involved with. and. Um, uh, you know, the most pressing of those issues is the farmer's market or, or the farm. And um, I, I can um, report that uh, the farm um, will be in the hands of Mosaic Land Trust uh, to oversee the operations of that this spring. So that will, will still be happening in the downtown um, this year. And, um, you know, we've just seen, I think, uh, in response to this, we've seen a lot of the businesses kind of step up and take a more active role in some of the things that Pedita used to do, um, and uh, including with interest in running other events uh, in the downtown to kind of fill that void until um, you know uh, Pedita um, figure figures out where it wants to go. And um, we'll be talking about uh, later on our agenda um, the car show that will be coming back to Pottstown as well. That concludes my report. Very good. I do. Thank you. Now, housing visions. So, if, if uh, you recall, um, this this is a, uh, a lease agreement for a uh, police uh, substation um, in the uh, Beach Street uh, factory. 
uh, that is um, providing a, uh, a space for the police department at essentially a dollar a year. And I don't know, Chuck, if you want to add any more um, details to that. Uh, no, I think the police chief advised you several months ago this was coming. Uh, as Justin said, there is no cost to the borough other than whatever costs it wants to incur to have internet access and phone capability. It'd be a three-year term with a automatic one-year renewal. And I think uh, the chief is uh, excited about the opportunity to have another presence in, in that part of town. So uh, it's, the lease agreement has been vetted. I think everybody's on board with it, so it's ready for your approval Monday if that's what you'd like to do. Very good. We'll list that. Nine is the Rickett Center Roof Bid Award. Uh, we hope to have a uh, recommendation for council on Monday night. Okay. Uh, Ten is uh, to reject January 28, 2019 bids on Memorial Park Phase 3. Yeah, so the bids came in uh, higher than we would have liked for that for that project. So what we're doing right now is working with the engineer to rescope the project so that uh, we can get it uh, closer to within the in the original um, budget that was conceived for in the grant that we got for that project. So um, we would ask council to reject uh, those bids Monday night so that we can then rebid under the new scope. Very good. We'll list that for Monday. Uh, 11, Pottstown Little League lease extension. It's a renewal. Chuck, do you want to hear me? Good. Yeah, this is one of the uh, long-term leases uh, the borough has with its uh, recreational fields. This is actually Novak Field. Pottstown Little League, I think, has been using that field for uh, at least uh, <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah, probably forever. Mm -hmm. But the current lease, I think, was a 15-year term. <coughs> it has expired. Uh, Mr. Lenhart, the Park and Rec Director, has been satisfied with um, what's been going on with that property and is recommending to council that we consider extending that under similar terms and conditions. I believe it's for another three, three-year periods of time. Very good. For nothing else, we'll list that for Monday. 12, a CDBG grant program for the stormwater inlet. Yeah, so this year we'd like to uh, pursue a, a, a grant for uh, stormwater inlet uh, replacement. Uh, it's, it's really not something that we um, have enough of in our, in our budget, so we're looking for the, the, the county and, and uh, the state to, to help us out with uh, that critical infrastructure. And that the grant that we're requesting is uh, approximately $250,000, and um, uh, we, there's no match required for the grant, but the borough would be required to cover any engineering costs that would be related to, to this project, which um, we, we think will be fairly, um, fairly minimal at this point since we're just a, replacing existing inlets. We're not really designing anything um, new at this point. Okay. We'll list that. 13, <coughs> part local match resolution for capital funding. Yes, yeah, so this is our annual um, uh, resolution for uh, the, the part capital funding. And um, we're requesting a uh, state amount of $256,440. Um, of section uh, 1517 funds and $17,214 of section 1514 um, state discretionary funds. And um, the, uh, the borough's match for this grant um, will be no less than uh, $574. Okay. We'll do that. 14 is the destruction of records resolution. We do this every year. Yeah, so this is our um, annual uh, list of uh, records that um, uh, we would be uh, destroying uh, in accordance with uh, Act 428-1968. Um, each each uh, individual act of disposition has to be approved by resolution of the governing body, so um, the list is included in your packet. Got it. Do that. Uh, 15, the PA Emergency Management Guidelines Resolution. So this is uh, a uh, requirement uh, for, the, for the borough to adopt an emergency uh, management plan. The borough um, has prepared and has reviewed an emergency management plan. Um, and uh, at this point, we'd ask that we adopt that on Monday night. OK, we'll list that. 16, the car show uh, by Red Horse Motoring Club. So uh, it would appear that the car show is coming back to town. Um, 
bigger it, and better. And it would uh, run under a new group, uh, the Red Horse Motor, Motor Club, which is uh, located on, on Hanover Street. Um, I believe they are changing it a little bit in that they're reducing it from um, five blocks to four blocks, but this will allow um, the intersection of Hanover and High Street to remain open, which is really critical to getting the visitors in and out of, out of town, also for you know emergency reasons as well. Um, so it would uh, propose to close High Street from North Hanover to North uh, Franklin Street, and uh, there would be a, a, a car show um, in May, June, uh, July, August, and September. They've also uh, provided rain dates in there as well. Um, between the hours of, uh, the car show will take place between the hours of 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. And you will notice that uh, the fee is uh, a little bit, slightly less than um, what the previous car show had paid and that is because they are closing less uh, yes. street area, um, so it, the fee gets reduced accordingly. Got it. Then does it require to have signature for people who live around it? Because I noticed that no, nobody signed. <coughs> yeah, um, let, me, let me look into that and get back to you. They might have had gotten signatures okay. since, since this, so okay. let, me, let me look into that. Okay, you'll check that and we'll list it for Monday. <clears throat> 17, Rock the Block. Another one. All right, so this is another uh, road closure on Saturday, April 13th, 2019, between 6.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. And this is the 400 block of Chestnut Street between North Franklin and Washington Streets. Okay. We'll list that for Monday evening. And they are, they are asking, um, they are requesting that council waive the fees um, for this event since it benefits Pottstown. And, um, <coughs> they're, they're working to identify any um, borough codes issues that, that, that may be within that rock, rock the block zone. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll do that Monday. We're waiving too many fees. <laughs> Every time somebody else. 18, Sly Fox, the annual goat race. <laughs> All right, so um, Sly Fox is looking to do their annual goat race on Sunday, May 5th, uh, 20, 2019, um, up at the uh, Circle of, of Progress. And um, they are asking for permission to use uh, the borough's parking lot at, at the airport. Um, uh, we've talked to the uh, fixed-based uh, operator up there, and uh, he, he is uh, amenable to that, to that arrangement. Okay. And... Um, we would want to execute a similar hold harmless agreement uh, like we did last year uh, to allow them to do that. Okay. And um, just on the si on a side note, um, the borough would like to enter the uh, goat race, and we're looking for a goat and <coughs> members of the police department to serve as the handlers. I, I was suggesting your fastest sprinter because the race is won by the handler, not the goat. <laughs> No, you're disqualified if you beat your goat. So, Mick or uh, Mayor, yeah. let me know if anyone's interested. Actually, you know, if we change the ordinance to allow hooked animals in the borough, we could have a goat mascot for the borough, and you wouldn't have to borrow one. That sounds good. Interesting. And I think that, Justin, I think that you should be the handler and race the goat in the race. Are you, are you a sprinter? <laughs> I was in high school. <laughs> Uh, can you run faster than our mayor? Well, maybe. No, I, I can't run fast. You can't. <laughs> we'll follow up on that. To be determined. I do have 15. <laughs> Good. Uh, and now we're at HARB. Uh, first documents for 61 North Franklin Street, 1124 East High Street is a deny. Any comments on these? 1124 uh, East High Street. Um, it looks like the uh, the, the uh, Harb Board had discussed it. Um, uh, they denied that application because they were uh, proposing to replace a slate roof with a shingle product, which um, 
you know, wasn't really fitting in with the historic character of the of the community, um, <coughs> and they felt that the applicant uh, wasn't able to demonstrate a, a, a hardship so for this, that. Yeah. This one. Okay. Uh, well, then, at this time, uh, I'm looking for John Solar. Yes. If you're in the audience, would you care to make a presentation about your case, or sure. uh, we grant you three minutes at the end for citizens' comments? John Solar. I'm a resident at 1124 East High Street. I've been uh, a resident of this town for 17 years, uh, since September 10th, uh, 2000. Um, I love the property I live in. I love the town. Uh, I'm a lifer here. I like it here. Um, draw me, what drove me to this town was the history, the architect, um, definitely the historic touch it had to it. Story above myself, so kind of cruel to me. That being said, um, I got to this house, and uh, you know, when we first got it, you know, um, you know, you run into these homes and you don't expect to find so many issues with them being that they're so old. And uh, basically, um, we have a slate roof that basically is over a hundred and plus years old, and uh, it's brittle. It's breaking apart, um, it's old, and it's tough having to replace slate on a property that needs so much work when I'm already trying my best to do that. Um, a lot of it has been done from the inside. Um, a pers personal, uh, I'm, I'm a contractor myself, um, you know, getting into the business, you know, but I have been working in the trades for over 20 years plus uh, of different sorts and skills so I can pretty much build a home. Uh, I'm just running into, uh, you know, leakages, and uh, we had a branch that fell off the roof, uh, the, you know, the side of the house onto the back part of the roof, and it and it basically made two huge holes that is now letting water go into the rest of the house, even with, um, even with, uh, you know, buckets and you know, plastic, whatever I could to turn around and uh, keep. It water from running going down into the second and, and first floor, uh, it did, and it damaged all the inner lighting walls, all the, a lot of work I've already done to the house, and um, basically it's not easy. It, it hasn't been, you know, fun in the sense that, you know, there's, there's so much work to still do to the house, but, you know, I'm willing to, and I want to restore the property to its original state as best I can. Uh, but to continue to do that, I need an effective roof to be able to save money on the heating bills, and I'll save money, you know, and having to pay out 30 grand for a roof that I can't afford. And basically, um, I, I'm quoted at having my my roof at you know a decent price that I can afford. Uh, that being said, you know, um, when my presenter for the roofing company that I work that you know I hired to present this case, I guess he probably did a lackluster presentation. Um, and uh, so here I am today in front of you, uh, pleading with you basically to <coughs> approve my roof. And uh, I have pictures, um, other packets if you'd like to see those, if you have it already. <coughs> Here's you can pass these if you don't mind, ma'am. Is your uh, house residential or commercial? Uh, my house is residential. I live the property. I'm always going to live the property. That's kind of the hardship of having to restore property, living it at the same time. It's not easy. Also with my family. Um, but I took pictures of all the houses in that strip of historical high street. And what I found was that there, out of all those properties, including across the street, all of those properties are basically shingles. There's not just two properties, one of them being mine, and one I think is 1134. I'm, I'm I think so. So, mm -hmm. so um, basically, um, you know, uh, the evidence of the damage is in the photos. Uh, uh, there's some things I didn't have enough room to print out because it's a lot of ink and a lot of paper, and you know, but there's, you know, 
a basic grasp of basically what you're gonna you know find and and on my research as far as the, the, the rule set is concerned. And being that there's only two rules left in that section, um, I'm in need of a roof and why deny, not why deny mine when there's so many already, you know, and to just try to keep it to to justify it and, and, and to keep it slate for historical <coughs> reasons. Yeah, that's lovely in, in a perfect world. It's it's what we all would want. Truthfully, I would. But it's not what I can afford. So um, I'm basically pleading with you guys to turn around and approve my roof so that I can continue with the work from the inside. And I also have a deadline to meet. And this was, a, you know, this, this situation started in, uh, I think, in uh, 116. Um, and um, basically, you know, I'm hard up right now. I, I, can't, I have everything on hold. I can't keep working. I'm not going to take the chance of doing more work inside the house, knowing that there's such exposure still to the roof, and it's it's pouring. Maybe I'm taking I'm taking in a lot of water, a lot of damage, <coughs> and um, I don't think it's fair that my roof got denied. Um, you know. I'm living the property, it's my home. Uh, I take pride in what I'm doing. I'm repairing everything I can from the inside out. And I uh, will continue to do so, but I, like I said, I need a roof. I need a roof that I can rely on. You're so talking the can, whole roof, front, back, Yes, everyone. I'm doing okay. the, front, the entire roof for the appraisal <clears throat> that was given. I got the contract already signed, if you guys want to take a look at that and everything, what materials and uh, the, the, the slate, the shingle that's getting that's replacing the slate in there is basically Camelot too, which is basically top grade shingle. Um, mm -hmm. Can't get, you know, I'm sure you can get better, but you know, it's it's up there. It's very good quality shingle, and it's really thick, and it's a 50 year shingle for 50 year roof. And once um, it's installed, will it look like slate? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It will. Well, is, this um, an as, even, is it, it an asphalt has, shingle or a cementus based shingle? What's the material? It, it? It's it's asphalt as well, but it's really thick, and um, there's also other materials inside the shingle that help it, uh, whatever it, it needs to do for it, resistance and what have you, durability. So, um, not to mention that I also got the top materials for <coughs> the underlinings that will go under the shingle itself. Mm -hmm. So um, I worked through my deal for the best money that I could get the roof um, to basically uh, get the top materials that I could. Um, the first contract he brought me <coughs> after we negotiated our arrangement was changed. So I made him take the contract back, which prolonged my, my you know, the ability, I guess, to come here and do whatever he needed to do to get permits for the roof and what have you. Then uh, he brought me the contract the second time, put the you know materials that I that we originally discussed in it, and then um, we signed the contract. Everything set to go, with the exception of your final approval. Okay. So uh, I plead with the council today that you know uh, I can get a roof in my house so that I can continue yeah. to do the work I need to do. And, and once sure again, from the street, it would appear that it's a slate roof. What, once you do this, when you're standing on the street, it would appear that sure, you have a slate it roof. Sure is. Uh, the house, uh, the house next door to me, just did the exact same shingle. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, 1122. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's marked on the path. You'll yeah. see it. But uh, it, it looks like shingle. You can't even tell from a distance or across the street. Looks like mine, slate. Mine is going to look even more like slate because it has the slate colors and mm. the reds and the browns and the grays mm. all intertwined. And it still looks like the, you know, uh, beautiful, it's a beautiful shingle. And 1122 was approved by Hard? Uh, 1122 was approved, correct. If, uh, so sir, was 1128. If you want to go ahead and pull that screen down, I pulled, <coughs> I pulled up a, a Google image of the Camelot 2. Um, is, that, is that what you're proposing? Yes, sir, it is. GAF Camelot 2 yes. antique slate with the red tones. It has red tones. That's the one my neighbor has right now. <coughs> okay. 
Any questions from council? Okay, we'll list it for Monday evening. Okay. Thank you very much for your mm -hmm. time. Thank I can you. Hear you. I appreciate it. Should I <clears throat> yes, please. please. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, 24 administratively approved, 58 North Franklin Street, 38 King Street, and 800 East High Street. Okay, we'll list those for Monday evening. 21 is comments from citizens present. Davis. Davis, I'm Davis, sorry. Okay. And please limit it to three minutes. Good evening. My name is Hannah Davis, and I reside at 1004 Beach Street, and I'm here to speak about a couple of topics that are near and dear to my heart. The first one is the young people of Pottstown, who are our future and for who we need to invest in today to see returns in the near and long term. The second topic is the December 2019 date whereby the Borough of Pottstown's contract with Olivet Boys and Girls Club will be up for renewal. My concern as a property owner, resident, resident and someone who has volunteered extensively at the center for, for in the past years is that this contract, is that as this contract expires that Borough Council and the Borough Management staff seek out the opinions of the community both young and old, regarding Olivet Boys and Girls' performance and running the center and their overall engagement with our community. I would ask that the Borough Council staff be open to input and alternatives that more fully meet the needs of the community. And I would also like to thank those on council and employed by our, our borough who have been willing to hear the voice of some community members so far regarding this topic. In towns across the nation, the most exemplary models of community revitalization have combined <coughs> economic development with community development. These two elements have worked best when working in tandem. My belief is that our community are, and our youth deserve better. Our humanity is just as valuable here in Pottstown as it is anywhere else. We deserve a community center that is run by and for the community in a way that honors our past, present, and future. The needs and the needs of our community residents. So my request remains that the Borough Council and staff open their hearts and minds to the vision of a more impactful community center that it becomes, that thrives as a haven for hope and healing through community participation, a community seat at the table, and collaboration between community members, the borough, and other institutions and organizations here in town before they accept any contract extension with Olivet Boys and Girls Club. Thank you. Next. Um, Jan Burgess, please. Um, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Um, I'm not sure where you are in your negotiations with all of that, but having worked on both sides, I'm a lifelong resident of Pottstown, and I also ran the Ricketts Center for about eight years. Um, as the unit director. Um, but what I want you to consider is this. Do these faces look familiar? They should. They should. Because their faces have been on the front pages of our local newspaper and in the uh, news media outlets. Um, These kids had potential. And during my tenure there at the Ricketts Center, I saw these kids every day. Now they're facing life in prison. These are the losers. These are the losers when there is a lack of relevant programming that benefits at-risk youth in this community and when there is a lack of community engagement with the Olivet Boys and Girls Club. I just want you to consider those things before you make a decision on renewing their contract. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, John uh, Solar, you're on the list, but I think 
do you need to speak again or so would I you think like I to? Spoke, I think that, yeah, I made my case. Okay, think so. good, good, good. So. Okay, um, Bob Larkin. Hi, I'm a have been a real estate investor in town, residential real estate for the last 25 years. I have been a resident for the last nine months. I moved in last year. I was at the hard meeting where his roof was reviewed. Um, I was representing the um, Pottstown cluster for 61 North um, Franklin. And um, having maintained old properties, I just, um, I think, I just want to express that by the, for the hard folks to say we must have slate roofs, like we, they're there, we, they have to be preserved, is that is an inordinate cost. And not just in this, in a hardship case. I would say in all cases. I feel like slate is an obsolete material. It is twice the expense of 50-year roofs that are great materials that look historically conforming, um, where we would never insist on people to um, spend that type of money on slate. Because it's not just that cost, that's cost that can't go someplace else. So again, maintaining old, pro old properties. I have double hung windows that are you know, single pane, that are rattly. Almost all of my windows are going to be in need of being replaced. And if you put $30,000 into a roof, you don't have that money to do other parts that also need to be maintained. So in this case, I would strongly advocate for not following Harb's guidance on this and approving his roof but furthermore in the future to you know not have a standard like where you would just say well any old asphalt roof you know we don't want a 20 year or three tab roof that looks you know god awful horrible but these are beautiful roofs i have used this camelot 2 material on my my property at 542 high street and they look fantastic um, and I, I just i think it's a it's a good use it's a reasonable accommodation to historical authenticity and it's the right thing to do thank, thank you. you next all right, uh, Ron Williams, talk about the powwow. <coughs> Not a lot to say, but I just wanted to uh, uh, to remind you we've got the, this is going on the sixth year. Uh, powwow is May fourth and fifth of this year, and uh, will be finished by six o'clock. By the way, you know, in case folks want to run over to the library, uh, and uh, in can. In bringing, you know, it's been about almost seven years uh, ago. I came here with uh, with my friend uh, Pat Harbach. We, uh, if, for a few of you will remember, we uh, did some storytelling uh, and and talked about the relevance of the uh, of the burial site over on um, over on uh, Industrial Highway in Franklin. Um, so, uh, and that was the impetus behind uh, uh, pushing the powwow uh, into Pottstown. We've gotten a lot of folks who come into this region uh, just for that event. Uh, it's going to be uh, trouble finding hotel rooms this year, from what I understand, um, which is nice. You know, it, it, it means something for us. Um, it's not a cheap. It's not a cheap endeavor. endeavor. Uh, I've had to. Uh, spend a lot of out of my own pocket just to just to keep this coming and I will keep it coming for as long as as, as I possibly can uh, but to that point I just want to let you know and I think I've copied all of you with uh, uh, my little flyer about uh, uh, our, our monthly uh, gathering over at Art Fusion it's uh, the third Sunday of every month uh, we do what I call reflections of Turtle Island it's a it's a one to two hour event that uh, we will alternately show movies about Native American culture and discuss the culture that we know is existing now and why the culture uh, has survived to the point we have, we have lectures coming in. Uh, our last one was uh, uh, a fellow by the name of Barry Lee. He talked about the uh, wampum belts and the, pen, the original pen treaty. <coughs> uh, this, uh, on the 24th of this month, we'll uh, be showing a video. It's a PBS production. It's after the Mayflower, and it's a fantastic uh, uh, representation of, of from the Native American perspective. Uh, we're doing this to raise funds. We don't ask for anything to come. We kind of hope that you come with something in your pocket, but <laughs> uh, 
But uh, we welcome you over at Art Fusion uh, Sunday, May to this month, uh, May, May uh, March 24th, from one to three o'clock. Very good. Thank you. No further citizen comments. Okay. Uh, next, how about general discussion from the councillors? <coughs> Councillor Paez? Um, we have this Saturday from 5 o'clock to 7, Taco and Domino, Christ at this clock. Everybody welcome and death donation. Councillor Lindsay. Um, this past Saturday, I seen Carol. <laughs> at the hairspray um, play at the high school. And let me tell you, these kids are awesome. They did a phenomenal job. I forgot I was in the high school, if I wasn't here, the babies in the back of me talking. <laughs> but um, it, was, it was, they did a really good job. I was really impressed, I was happy, I was like, yeah, they should charge more than eight dollars, but I'm not complaining, I like the eight dollars, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> it was good. It was. Um, I had a good time there, and um, uh, I did speak to Pine Forge Academy. <laughs> I did speak to them, and I'm talking to them, and try. They want to try to do, try to get their names out there in the community, and they want to do some community uh, outreach, like cleaning the streets or going to whatever they're going to do, you know, just trying to get in there in the community and let them know that they can support, because I, I didn't even know they existed until they called me, so, but um, I'm working behind the scenes on that, so, yeah. and um, I'm also actually working on the Ricker Center and stuff like that, trying to um, get some more uh, volunteers and um, try to get us more active in the middle school and the Ricker Center and trying to get more awareness in there. Um, <clears throat> oh, potholes. Now, you guys know my car. You know what kind of car I drive, right? These potholes are like swimming pools out there. We're going to have to do something about these. My Dodge Charger was crying the other day about these <coughs> potholes. We're going to do something about these potholes. I don't know, Jeannie, I'll be sending you a long email about doing like this. <laughs> Yeah. Send, send, send us a list. <laughs> I'm going to send you a whole list. It's a whole bunch of streets. I have to change my route to go to work. Right now, you just fill them with water. They'll freeze. <laughs> well, the kids were standing there at the water hole looking for fish. I said, no fish going to come out that pothole. <laughs> come out of that street. It's for bike lanes. But, anyway, but that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Counselor Lebedinsky. She brings up bike lanes. <laughs> Of course. They're not used just for bike lanes from what I've seen. I've seen baby carriages being pushed in them. <laughs> they have wheels. <laughs> Dangerous regardless. So I know. Please be careful with these bike lanes. I, I'm just waiting for the first day that somebody comes in and says, hey, or see it in the newspaper that somebody got killed because they were either walking, riding the wrong way, having a baby carriage, child blowing a stop sign. Just be careful. Be careful. Educate everyone. Educate your kids. Okay. <clears throat> Councilor Cope. I just wanted to mention the uh, play Hairspray. It was, I've been to three of these plays now, and, and I've also been to Broadway plays. And I'll tell you what, these plays that these kids put on now and, and, who, and the, the directors, they're amazing. They're as entertaining as spending an exorbitant amount of money of going, uh, going to a Broadway play. Yes. They are so good, and the kids are so talented, mm -hmm. and they, they work their hearts and souls out. So, yes, I, th I think it's good to support these kids in these high schools, not just Pottstown, but all the surrounding schools that have mm -hmm. these plays and musicals. People complain, oh, I don't have anything to do. Oh, I'm never. Go, to the, go to the kids' spring concerts. Go to their Christmas concerts. Go to their plays. Uh, these these kids want to see the um, Pottstown people or the area people they are supporting them, and I, I think this is a good thing. Great. <clears throat> Councilor Prosk. Well, congratu congratulations again to Beverly. It's like the 
little pies that she makes, especially the uh, key lime ones. They're delicious. <laughs> and, uh, I'm glad that the, uh, the car show is coming back, too. It'll make a little boy summer. He loves mm -hmm. going down there. So. Are you going to go down for a slice of the jellyfish or the octopus? Or? And squid. Or <laughs> they're all delicious. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to hold you off there because I have a request. Uh, are there any comments from our Boy Scout? Go ahead, co team Deb. Get her, get her run for office? <laughs> no? Okay. Put him on the spot for you. Mayor Hendrick. I want to say thank you to Trinita for covering my butt and helping out on Pine Forge. I got called into court that day and I could not respond, so I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for that. And for everyone else, get out and go and downtown and hang out and partake in all of our awesome events and drink beer and blueberry infused vodka and eat tacos. I mean, it's pretty awesome downtown. So get down there. My only complaint last weekend was there was no parking. <laughs> That's the we only wish. Sad. Okay. I have to agree with everyone up here. Uh, there are a multitude of things to do here in town every week. Uh, you only need to come down and look or go on a website, the school's website, the borough's website, or any of these organizations. Um, I, I was a leadership, uh, was at a leadership breakfast this morning, and hearing from those outside the borough that are investing in here and working in here and they're just so excited to come within our boundaries um, so for those of you who live within the boundaries and you haven't been downtown for a while or you haven't been to all these organizations that are functioning uh, I welcome you I challenge you to come out and see all the new things going on and uh, that should conclude our meeting meeting adjourned <laughs>